right, Fran, this is going to be a great conversation. I'm so pumped for this. And your story, I think, is going to speak to so many seamstresses who are like on the bubble. Like, do they want to get into bright alterations? But where do they host their fittings? And you do this so well. So thank you for being here today and uh, being ready to share your story a little bit. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. Yeah. So we were just chatting before we hit record about your life before um, sewing <laughs> or before your sewing business, yes, right? sewing, <laughs> sewing. a lot of your life. So right. can you kind of walk us through um, what led you into professional sewing and then tell us about like your previous life before you became a bridal seamstress? Okay. So what led me into sewing was um, a group of ladies at the Grange in a place called Kimberton, Pennsylvania, where I was sent to 4-H every summer. So wow. my mom wanted to keep us busy, my sister and I, and we went to 4-H and in the morning, I believe was cooking and the afternoon was sewing. Perfect. Right. Perfect combo. <laughs> you know it, I know. <laughs> so, um, and, and all those skills, I still use all those skills mm -hmm. to this day. Um, and the first uh, project we did like in 4-H you go through let's make a and then you fill in the blank okay so like the first project is let's make a pair of slippers and you make it out of uh, two washcloths and you fold them in half and you sew elastic around them. If, like your feet are that little at that point in time I could never do it now <laughs> right and then, like so let's make a skirt let's make a dress let's make a wool skirt that's when people started to drop out because mm -hmm. it's in the summer you're making a wool skirt who wants to wear that in the summer yeah. and you have to line it you know? okay yeah mm -hmm. that's hard yeah so that's where I acquired my sewing skills and always was sewing yeah throughout my life and my mom was pretty good seamstress too she took those stretch and sew courses way back when they had them when you learned how to sew with knits and oh, fun. Yeah. So it, was, it was fun you know to to compare what we were doing and mm -hmm. those were all good times that's for sure yeah yeah. So when I decided what I was going to do for a career, I went into teaching. I went into music because I love singing. I played the flute and I played the piano and guitar. And I was like, let's just do this. Why not do something you love for a living? Right. 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 So I did, that. <laughs> right. I know. I know. That's what you do. So I did that for about 12 years. And then at that time in education, um, arts were being cut from budgets mm -hmm. and I was like this cannot happen and when you would try and talk to a school administrator it was like you're speaking Greek they didn't understand anything I was saying so I thought you know <laughs> you, are you done that? Right? yes <laughs> yeah so I thought okay why don't I become an administrator then I can advocate for the arts mm -hmm. so Love I did it. that and it was cool because I was always like the principal and the fine arts coordinator. That was always mm -hmm. my, my side gig in the school system because you have to do your education job and a curriculum piece. Okay. So I was always the fine arts person and the music and art people were so thrilled to have someone who understood what they were doing. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, so mm -hmm. administrator for about 15 years. Then I felt like I was growing out of that work and became a school improvement consultant. It took me all around the United States working in some of our nation's most lowest performing schools. Wow. Yeah. So that so was would that be like a would that be like you'd work with a specific school for a week or would you work with individual teachers or what did that look like? I would work for a school system or and be placed in a school and um, do professional learning and then I would coach the following week. So it was every week I would get on a plane on a Monday, come home on a Friday. It was wow. quite the life, but oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was fun. I learned, I can't say I was the one who was always imparting knowledge on people. I learned so much from all the things that I saw I'm and sure. from the school leaders that I worked with. It was, wow. it was a very humbling experience. I, I loved it, loved it. Um, but then, you know, it was tiring mm -hmm. and I was always sewing for people all throughout my life. <laughs> doing like, um, cause in college, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, my, like my senior year in college, I was at a friend's wedding and we went for, to this little mom and pop business, Laurentos in Westchester. And they're like, um, 
uh, oh, we're just so short staffed. And my girlfriend says to the owner, um, well, my friend Fran, she sews. <laughs> <laughs> and there, and the owner, Paulette, was like, oh, okay, great. Um, can you come in for an interview? <laughs> and I got the job. So that's where I learned about bridal. She taught me everything I know about bridal. Paulette Lorento. Oh my goodness. Thank Sweet you, Paulette. French woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it was like this parallel thing was happening. You know, mm-hmm. I would sew for bridesmaids, friend, friends who were bridesmaids mm-hmm. and for myself when I was a bridesmaid yeah. and um, worked in that salon, worked in another salon um, many miles from where I live here. And uh, while I was teaching, because mm-hmm. at the time teachers were not being paid anything and I needed right. supplemental income, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when I decided maybe I should think about what I'm going to do when I retire, mm-hmm. um, both my daughters were in the wedding industry. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yes. 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 I have a daughter who is a wedding cake artist. Um, mm-hmm. Floretta Sweet, just in case you want to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll and, add that um, in the show notes for sure. <laughs> yeah. And my other daughter, uh, my youngest daughter um, was doing signage at the time. She now has mm-hmm. another job. But, um, and they would start to say, oh, mom, you, you could do this. And um, so I started to take people in and they started to recommend people and the word got out. And before mm-hmm. you know it, People are traipsing through my house, going up to my bedroom to try things on and I'm sewing and I'm like, okay, I think it's, you know, one's getting bigger. The other job's getting smaller due to COVID. Totally. And I was like, so it's time. Mm-hmm. So that's what I Wait, did. So I- this was so recent. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I have been an LLC uh, since May of um, 2018. Okay. That's when I became an LLC. Mm -hmm. But I was sewing all of these years prior to that. And I Mm -hmm. thought when it started to really ramp up, I thought, oh, I better become legal. You know, I better better become an LLC. You know, if I'm going to do this, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is so cool. Yes. Oh my goodness. I guess I just, and, and I think it's so cool that like your whole life, you were just kind of like fine tuning these skills. And then mm-hmm. it was just the right time where, like you said, one facet, like the, the bridal sewing business just kind of was consuming more of your thoughts and your joy. And then it's like, okay, now it's time to, so is that when you decided to retire from your consulting job or did COVID yes. kind of force that? Well, a little of yes to both. Okay. You know, I was, I was really, I mean, you're really traveling a lot and I was getting oh, yeah. tired. Mm-hmm. And, um, and finally I said to my husband, I think, I think I just am kind of done, you know, mm-hmm. plus I was working for the state, for the state department of ed here in Pennsylvania. And, um, they had made some changes to their grant program that said, either you are full time or you don't do this work. And I didn't want to do that full time. Yeah, because I was doing the bridal part time on the side. Oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, and I was like, I'm really liking this creative bridal thing, and I'm yeah, kind like, of wrestling with people in schools, you know. <laughs> so I mean, you know, because you you yeah. are you are trying to impose change, mm-hmm. right? And, and it's hard to do that. It takes three to five years for people to change their practices. So wow. it's not going to happen overnight. You, yeah. That's a lot of energy. Long. And mm-hmm. I, ca- I can't imagine doing both while you were working full time. Cause I was able to um, drop down to part-time when I started building my business on the side before I mm-hmm. left education, because I was a secondary music teacher. So we were itinerants and I was able to drop the traveling piece and just stick to like one school as like a 0.6. So that was how I kind of weaned out, but the thoughts of being like full t- and that was just like classroom teaching. I mean, I don't want to say just classroom teaching. I know there's right. a lot of energy, but like that didn't include the travel and the coaching and like all of like the brain work that goes into like working mm-hmm. with adults. <laughs> right. The prepping yeah. of the PowerPoint. Would, right? so, <laughs> oh my word. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So when you kind of thought of starting the business and I know that it's something that you kind of were doing for a long time before it was like, I'm going to start a business. Like, did you have reservations or mm-hmm. did you have to like work through something in order to get to starting the business? Or can you tell us about that? Yes. So I was concerned that, um, because look, I'm an educator. 
and I think everybody should have a good education. And I thought, what's my educational background in sewing? <laughs> and then when I ask that question, I kind of hear crickets in my mind, you know, <laughs> um, because I never had a formal fashion design Mm -hmm. um, you know, degree or anything or training. I had right. a group teacher in Mrs. Laurento and, and picked up a lot of really cool things on YouTube. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and you'll learn by making your mistakes or whatever. But, um, I was really worried about that. And, you know, that's a good, that imposter syndrome, it's like right oh, there in yeah. your face, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just kind of had to work through that and say one dress at a time, one stitch at a time, one little piece of alteration at a time, work on that, make it perfect. Well, mm -hmm. you know, as perfect as you can be. Right. Um, and, and go from there. But yeah, that at first it was like, do I really know what I'm doing? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think too, like, like you said, one dress at a time and then knowing that you can say no to things like mm -hmm. that was so freeing. My mother-in-law told me that. And she's like, you can say no and only take on the jobs that you feel really comfortable and confident with. And then when mm -hmm. you're ready, you can learn new skills. And that was so freeing to be like, oh yeah, I can say no. I don't need to like bend over backwards and like have nightmares about this dress. I can work with where I am and what I'm ready with. And that one stitch to time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and also you can turn customers away. If you start to see that they're getting uh, agitated or uh, their vision isn't being realized, and that's only really happened to me one time. And, th and that was in the very beginning. And I just think it was a difficult bride who was yeah. going through some other things. Okay. And I, I literally feel like our lives are so mirrored because <laughs> I had, I, it was at the beginning of my bridal sewing career. I had a similar bride that I had to turn away and everything about that experience so much about how to read brides, how to Self, how to have that awkward conversation. I can't believe that. Okay. So I know you can't go into details, but keep That's talking okay. about that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I just was, she just wasn't going to be satisfied no matter what I did. Yeah. And finally I, and, and I, like my, they were blowing up my phone. Um, she and her mom, uh, it was a father's day that were blowing up my phone saying they were not happy. And, and I was like, okay. Mm. We're, and so I remember my daughter saying, you know, mom, you, you don't do crappy work. You do nice work, mom. Mm -hmm. And so I think they're just being difficult. And uh, it's nice to have that perspective. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're your in, you're in the hurricane, you know, <laughs> and, and you can't see your way out of this door. Yeah. And so I called them and I said, maybe this just isn't a good fit. I'm going to pack everything up. And they're like, well, what can we pay you? I said, nothing. I did not satisfy you. And I certainly did not want them leaving saying she did a poor job and she even charged us for it. I didn't want yeah. that happening either. Yeah. But, um, but really, if I didn't do what they needed to have done, I was not going to charge them mm -hmm. anything. And I just was like, you're like, I will pay you for my peace of mind. So you, right, you got it. <laughs> Don't need this. Don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So you mentioned this before you're having brides traipse up to your bedroom. So mm -hmm. do you still, um, like, are you, yeah. Explain your fitting situation. Okay. So when I started, we were in a different house and had two floors and mm -hmm. I had set up in this larger spare bedroom that we had. And so people would come to the house, go right up the stairs. And I didn't like the fact that they're climbing up the stairs. And at the top of mm -hmm. the stairs is our master bedroom. They can see in there. Oh, look yeah. at your cat sleeping on the bed. You know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, and at the time my daughter and son-in-law were living with us and uh, he was in the restaurant industry and he was sleeping late because he was working mm -hmm. very late, you know, and I thought, I didn't want to wake him yet. We're traipsing up the stairs and, uh, mm -hmm. and people were also trying things on and getting their fittings in the same space where I was doing my production. Okay. So, you know, you're in the middle of pressing a dress, you see the car pull up in the driveway, like, okay, uh, yeah. put an iron, put yeah. the iron board away. And I'm, uh, this is horrible, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't right. want them to see deconstructed dresses because right. that's scary for people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my husband and I were talking about it and he is so supportive. He is super supportive. And we had thought um, maybe it was time for us to consider where would we retire? Mm -hmm. What kind of home okay. do we want? Do I want to keep going up and down the stairs 
20 times a day. It was starting to get hard on my knees. Mm -hmm. So we decided to build a home that was mostly all one floor. And he was like, and then we could put a bridal suite in there for you. Oh, so nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. He was really supportive. So we met with a builder, designed the house so that there was a, one side of the house where I have, I'm sitting in it right now, the fitting room um, wow. where I do my fittings. I have mm -hmm. a changing room for them and it leads into a, a bathroom should people need that. Mm -hmm. And then my workspace is on the other end of the house uh, up on a second level. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Is if, it, if you had it set up in the same spot. Wow. That is amazing that mm -hmm. you got to like design your oh, yeah. home around the business. Oh my goodness. Yes. And the architect was wonderful that we worked with. Cause I kind of told him what I do and what mm -hmm. you're kind of like, Oh, I'm a bridal seamstress. And, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little shy about it. He's like, Oh, so you need a dressing room. Let's do that. And let's do this. And I mean, he was so good. So wow. was fortunate and people, they walk right in the door and they turn right. And they're right in this room. Cause that's what I was going to ask is how it's set up. Like how much now do they have to walk in your house before they're in your setup or in your like studio space, but right. it's like right there. Who so says? then I'm thinking of people who are kind of just getting started and you know, that your options are to maybe have fittings at a bridal suite or a bridal shop, and then you're paying rent there. But what if you just want to get started and you're opening your home? How did you, even with the going up and down the stairs, and I know that was really inconvenient, but it was like a first step, right? So you kind of have sure, to absolutely. That work. And then before you, you know, build the house to accommodate the business. So can like, how did you prep? Did you have certain days of the week where you had fittings or like, like your cleaning yes. days or whatever? Right. Well, I think at first, because I was just like slow and I only mm -hmm. had a few brides here and there, Yeah, I would take them whenever, but then it started to get busy and I yeah. thought, okay, this is not good. I have to block out time for sewing days mm -hmm. or sewing half days, whatever. Right. Yeah. And block out time for trying on, doing fittings, picking mm -hmm. up days. Putting on makeup, getting dressed. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Putting a bra <laughs> on. Well, you know. that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's my generation. We do that anyway. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So like, and Saturdays, I kind of said to myself, I am done at one o'clock. I'm finished because mm -hmm. I want to spend time with my husband and my family. Mm -hmm. um, no working on Sundays. That's kind of a thing with me. That's, that's something that I won't compromise on. Yeah. Um, she says, right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, once in a while there's a pickup or whatever. All right. No, I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, generally I do, um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is when people come. I'm open on Thursday evenings and Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon mornings okay. you know, until one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's perfect. Cause you have kind of like those three days in the middle where things can be clean or like even before when you were using your home, like mm -hmm. those are the days when you'd have to make sure the house was clean, you know, and then you were presentable and then you can kind of the other, the long weekend is when you could devote to just working right. and getting the, the stuff yoga done. pants. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I know. And even that, work. you know, it's the amount of time people are in your home is minimal mm -hmm. compared to the amount of time you need to sew. Right. Right, you know, right, right. So like, even though I say Tuesdays, I'm open, you know, from like nine to five or nine to six or whatever. Um, I don't have people here every single Tuesday, nine to nine to right. five. I don't, right. you know, so. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when, before I got the shop, when I was sewing at home, even like my husband and I would arrange it so that he like, wouldn't be home or, you know what I mean? Cause I just didn't want the brides to hear like, um, I don't know if they'd feel uncomfortable or like hear my husband's voice or something like that. You know what I mean? So they, we were like, <laughs> he'd be like, what are they coming? Okay. I'll be out of here. And then right. you just want, and my sewing room was down the hall. So it's like, they had to walk through the house. So I wanted everything mm -hmm. to look and smell prevent, yes. you know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. um, presentable. And I felt like the whole house was on display, you know, cause you have to walk through it to get to the sewing room. And of course I was doing everything in the same room. And I look back, even like when I first started and I was like, oh, like at the very beginning, it was a little bit cringy. And then once I was like, okay, I actually need to like, just be aware of everything. Cause I think of like my first time in people's homes, you know how you just take in everything. Yes. Like there's mm -hmm. a smell, there's like, you just notice things that obviously the homeowners don't notice like living there. So taking those little things into consideration, like having, yeah, just take yes. it to the next and level. 
And this is uh, like a farmhouse. Uh -huh. you know? So it's very open floor plan, except for this side where everybody <laughs> tries to dress it on. So they walk in and they're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, get in here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so like, look at my wall art later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just me and my husband. So for the most part, everything is nice and tidy and neat and, mm -hmm. and it's all good. Yeah. Um, and I have a cat. She doesn't come in here and bother. Once in a while she'll stand outside the door and, you know, <laughs> meow. But <laughs> so what are your cool. favorite perks? Um did you ever work at a even like when, when you were working in college, you went to the bridal shop to do alterations, right? Or the, yes, you worked outside mm -hmm. the home. So you can kind of compare the two. So like, what are your favorite mm -hmm. perks of working from home? Well, I like that I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Like, That's that always nice. <laughs> you know, you're watching your little show and you're like, I know someone's going to be here in 10 minutes. All right, click. And then you just yeah. stand and wait for them. You know, I look kind of like that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, mm. well, the other thing I like is that people sort of get to know who I am when they come mm -hmm. to my house. Mm -hmm. They can see my style. They can see mm -hmm. um, what I'm about, hobbies, whatever. So they get to, I think, see with our customers, we really have to connect. Mm -hmm. And I, that's important to me is to form a connection so they trust me. And yeah. so when they come in here, they can see, oh, this is what she's about. Oh, wow. Look at that. She likes this style or that style or, yeah. you know, or there's yeah. her family in that picture or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's important. And yeah. it's just another way of, you know, make, having that personal connection. Yeah, Plus they'll say, oh, wait, is, is this new? Or, you know, because we've only been here since uh, last May. And um, wow, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, oh yeah. Oh, who was your building? You know, we have that conversation yeah. or we get, to, I I'm learning a little bit more about this little community that I'm living in because it's kind of mm -hmm. rural out here and just learning people. Yeah. So yeah. And nice to meet all those people too. So, right. Yeah. So have you had to set any boundaries for yourself or for your clients with, I bet this will be good. <laughs> with, <laughs> well, Working you know, home. I could work 24 seven, right? Yes. I mean, oh yeah. Like, um, or you can so. start working at like 10 PM, which is a horrible habit of mine. Like, Oh Ooh. yeah. I'm just going to whip this out real quick. Oh gosh. Yeah, I could, but I've only did that. I've only done that one or two times. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, so I do have to say, okay, five o'clock, five 30, I'm done. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. or I yeah. will sit and watch television with my husband as I'm like, pulling out a seam or whatever yeah <laughs> it's really busy season that will happen but yeah. um so that's one thing the other thing is this is the space the space I'm sitting in this is it they do not need to go out and about but I have this nice plush carpet in this fitting room so mm -hmm. once they're off the platform and I want to see if their hem is going to brush the floor if they're going to fall on it I do open up the little door and say okay now take a walk out into the dining room and then come back because there's hardwood out there yeah and and they are good with that now one time I had a very bold customer here comes the story <laughs> I have a sunroom in that opposite end of the house that has one of those really fuzzy shaggy rugs you know area oh, rugs yeah, yeah. Right? they're kind of fun and you know Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's a, a teal green color, right? Okay. So she kept telling me how she was worried that her dress was going to get stuck in the grass. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was like, no, it's going to be fine. It should brush your toes because the floor, that whole thing. I'm like, I made it a little shorter for her since she was worried. So we pin it all up and I said, okay, now go take a walk out there, come back in. And she walks out into the dining room and she goes, Oh, look over there. There's a rug that looks just like grass. I'm going to go. And she boldly walks to the back of the house and walks into my sunroom and kind of is taking the tour of the home, you know, uh, yes. which I think really was what she wanted to do. <laughs> She's using your like grass rug as like. Yeah, a yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, well, that is not going to happen again. So now I'm like really clear. Go take one, one pass in the dining room, then come right back. <laughs> okay then they do it <laughs> like, like tape or like a baby game <laughs> <laughs> like that. yeah that is good. so funny <laughs> one time we uh I was working with a bride and she was really easy to work with and she wanted just something adjusted to her neckline but her mother was very 
uh, involved. Mm-hmm. Say that. And so we, you know, this is when I was sewing at home. And so my husband and I went camping for a few days or actually just two, because I can only sleep in a tent one night. Anyway, I'm just yeah. the point. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I come, when we come back into service, I have like three texts from this mother, the bride and two phone calls. And she's like, I want to come check on the dress before you finish it. I'm actually sitting in front of your house. Um, you're not answering the door, but I see a car in the driveway. And then she <laughs> left me two voicemails that sounded the same. I'm just wondering, like, I'm pretty sure you're here, but it's me. And I'm, I'm outside your house right now. And I was like, oh my goodness. I was so thankful that we were like literally like in the woods, you know, so she can right. find me. It's also like, what? It's almost like that assumption that, okay, this is your house. So clearly I can just come when, cause I know you live here and you should be right. here cause your car's right there. It's like, ah! and that you, I mean, I still, um, you can still have that obviously when you have like a brick and mortar, if like you're on the street, but sure. not as often I feel like as a home, because they feel like, like you said earlier, we have that connection, we're friends, mm-hmm. but we're not like that type of friends, people like, come no, on. no, 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 right. Good <laughs> professional connection. Yeah. 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 And you should have asked that person to bring your mail in. So <laughs> while well, well, you're in front of my house, can you get my mail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and I have had people come a little earlier than I wanted them to, mm-hmm. and I'm still like eating my breakfast or something, and I'm like, okay, whatever, and I, you know, I'm yeah. flexible. If it works yeah. for them, I'm I'm fine. That's you know? very, very exciting. I've had to struggle through that because the earlier, uh, I and I I lock my door in between fittings too, and mm-hmm. so if they come really early, just like when you were talking about your pressing address, when you said that earlier, I was like, Oh yeah, I've totally been there where it's like, you're in the middle of a task. And then it's like, you're here 25 minutes early. Like, yeah, there's a, it's an appointment time for a reason, you know, <laughs> but yeah, when you're home and they're like, when you're home, <laughs> open yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. or if someone so, is um, early while I'm running behind with that yeah. one, you know, customer, they really don't have a place to wait. I have them sit in the right. living room area. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's just all about scheduling. And yeah. That happens. Yeah once in a blue moon. Yeah. So I can. Do okay. It. So I'm thinking of people who, like we said before, are thinking of getting into sewing, but they're like, but I have to do it at home. Can you give them some basic steps? Like how do you even get started? How do you designate a specific space? And then even mm-hmm. like prepare the entryway <laughs> for the, <laughs> yeah. the whole walk of the bride. <laughs> right. Well, then I think there's like the physical preparations, right. And then there's mm-hmm. the business side of the preparations that you have to think about. Um, and then there's this, also this, uh, I'm going to say mindset that you have to think about. So as far as the physical preparations, you have to start thinking, how can people walk in? How are they not going to bother my family? Mm-hmm. Um, what time do I, like, how am I going to set up those boundaries? Mm-hmm. Okay. And even how am I going to set up boundaries for myself? Right. And, um, how big do I want this to get? Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yes. I probably could get bigger if I hired someone else because I'm turning people away. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I don't have a room for another seamstress here. And yeah. I don't think I want to get that big in mm-hmm. my life, you know, right. There's other things happening for me. So I, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So you have to kind of ask yourself those questions. Um, mm-hmm. And also you have to, now I'm fortunate. I have a really supportive husband and I've had the business to support me to get a nice industrial machine, a really good industrial steamer iron and the nice mm-hmm. table for it. Although I have also gone to my local Habitat Restore and I found a really huge conference table and moved it up into my sewing room. And it's this really awesome. great conference table that I can cut things on and even use my rotary cutter on because I'm like, what do I have to lose, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to use it as a conference table. It's my sewing <laughs> table. So I just dull the blade a little faster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, so you have to think about that. Also, I, I'm worried about the handicap accessibility in my mm-hmm. first location if someone was handicapped they could not come you know Mm -hmm. while we were building this house we had to live in an apartment um because we were just in between you know our other households quickly and we were building this one and that was really cool because we had an elevator and people could you know I did not have one girl in a wheelchair that needed to come in 
So mm -hmm. she had to come here. There's one step up to our porch and one step into the house. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not so bad, but you have to think about those things. Right. It's something yeah. to consider. So you're not put in the spot like, oh, I didn't even, didn't even cross my mind. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be blindsided or right. make them feel like uncomfortable because you're unprepared. Right. And you also have to think, what's my branding going to be? This is the the part where I say the mindset, what's my branding? What's my vision? Do I have a mission statement? Mm -hmm. Everything that you do should feed into that mission statement, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, um, are you going to be inclusive? And if you are, what does that look like? And how are you conveying that? Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of have to, I, I really felt like I got started and then I thought, well, wait, what, what's my vision here? Right. What's my mission? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What am I going to be about here? Am yeah. I going to, am I going to, um, let just anybody walk through the door and I just price accordingly, or am I going to mm -hmm. set prices and expect a certain amount of money? How organized right. am I going to be about profit yeah. and loss and whatever about the mm -hmm. business side? So I decided to be pretty organized that way. Yeah. And it makes That's a huge good. difference because then all of a sudden you're actually seeing the like the clients that you dreamed of, like they're the mm -hmm. ones coming through your doors and then you have systems to kind of weed out the tire kickers or whatever. And like, you do have a season where you kind of just take, you know, anybody or any dress because sure. then you have to learn. I don't want to do this again. <laughs> or like sure. I don't want to work with you again. <laughs> yeah. And like, like even that um, step back, it's so shows. important. You know, oh, yeah. like what type of bridal show are you going to go to? And mm -hmm. fortunately, my daughter was taught me about that. And because I guess she learned too the hard way, you know, yeah. um, I had been to, we call it pipe and drape shows where they're in that big conference room or a big, you know, conference like center centers, yeah. and there's like 25 different vendors lined up and, you know, mm -hmm. I've helped both of them set up for something like that. And then once uh, we got immersed in this business, we realized, wait a minute, we don't want to do that. We want to go somewhere where someone is paying to be there, that right. they're vetting these girls, um, you know, or, or these couples yeah. and, um, and determining what their budgets are and what do they need when they're coming to the show, you know, then you get a different type of client. Oh, totally. And I know yeah. that sounds snotty, but you know, or snotty. No. I <laughs> But I, I think also like the, what I found is people who don't want to pay for me, they can go to, you know, the, the seamstress that's attached to the dry cleaner because they take all alterations and they're mm -hmm. not offering like a bridal experience. And that's what just makes it a different experience. And one thing you said earlier made me think of when I was sewing from home and, um, I think you said like what is your branding with that? And so at the time I really wanted it to be like, oh, you're coming in my home and this is comfortable and cozy. And I always had like, we would sit down kind of like in my little front living room first and chat. And I would offer them like something to drink and I'd have little treats or whatever. And I'd really play up that like home visit. And right. this is like, remember when they had to like walk through the whole house to like get to the sewing room. So, um, right. because I used that to my advantage and then it was like, Oh, cool. You know what I mean? And right. then I, I think also because I felt, I felt a little insecure about it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, if I make this into something that I'm choosing, and I'm building a brand off of it, then it's my choice instead of like, oh, this is just, does that make sense? Right. Who's driving the bus pretty much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? um, are you, and then are they I, taking the lead from you or are you taking the lead from that? Right, know? right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, and even like when I moved into my shop, I'm still keeping some of those pieces, you mm -hmm. know, which would be a different episode, but it just, it changed my um, my outlook on the home fitting so much when I was like, actually, it's an honor to have people in my home and mm -hmm. I'm giving them a really like loving experience instead of what they could get, you know, going into some general tailor around here. So yeah, right. it's, I, I want think them like, to just really, all the way that you look at it. <laughs> right. I want them to really feel, um, joy when they're in my space mm -hmm. and I want them to feel comfortable um, I don't ever want someone to leave and say, wow, that was stressful or intense. Right. You know, I want right. it to be, I, I don't even know what to call it, like a, a luxurious experience. Like they were pampered, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, totally. Right. And also the educator in me wants to educate them as to what I'm doing. 
too. Yes. Not just like, all all your up, real, okay, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your real game is on point and it's super educational. So I was like, Ooh, mm-hmm. I know where you've been. Thank you. <laughs> you've been in the classroom. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard to think of that content. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh gosh. But that could be like a whole nother hour conversation. You but know before you go, oh boy. I, <laughs> um, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about um, another cause that you sew for in addition to brides. And mm-hmm. I can't, I don't, I, you mentioned it in a different conversation and I, I don't even remember like the title of this organization or, but I just remember feeling like, oh, this is so cool. So I wanted to give you time to talk about it and right. you know, maybe others would want to get involved. So, well, I really appreciate you giving me the airspace <laughs> for this. Really. I do. Yeah. It's something I am passionate about. And I guess I got passionate about it because uh, my youngest daughter, Tess, she's the non-baker. She's the one who started mm-hmm. out doing signage and she has always had, um, a passion for the oppressed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she worked at a place called the Safe House in Lancaster City and uh, was very active in um, giving shelter to people during the George Floyd protests and whatever, and was being supportive uh, Mm -hmm. during that time. She created something called uh, Small Business Intersectional Industry Directory. So if you're white, like you know, I am, mm-hmm. if you were, I guess if you are a class that is not oppressed, um, mm-hmm. you could uh, join this directory, but you had to show that you were welcoming to uh, races, uh, any uh, gender identity, sexual identity, um, body types, you were inclusive, okay? Mm-hmm. And you had to show that somehow on your website. And she even gave, um, and this is her real job now, She's a training mm-hmm. quarter for uh, okay. training coordinator for the YWCA in Lancaster um, for racism and, and equity. And so she gave some trainings to us. Uh, we would have um, once a month on Sunday nights, we would meet over Zoom and um, she'd do a lot of uh, work where we were self-reflective on our inclusive practices. And so we had to form a goal one time. What are we going to do with this information that we are learning? And and um, I had heard from the Love to Sew podcast, I don't know if you listened to that, um, they had someone on there from the Social Justice Sewing Academy, and oh. they have uh, different branches of how they um, use the fabric arts to promote social justice, okay? Mm-hmm. And I w- was like, so taken by this, I thought, this, this is right up my alley. Because mm-hmm. I love the arts, I love to sew, I love, and it's a social justice thing. Yay, yeah. I could do something yeah. with this, right? Yes. So they had something called uh, remembrance quilts, or um, it's, I want to see, I wrote it down. Yeah, the remembrance quilt project. And um, there's a directory that they publish. You, of course, have to go onto their website and ask them to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And the directory is the names of people who have been killed unjustly. Could be domestic violence, could be a school shooting, could be at the hands of the police. It could be, you name it, any way someone has been killed unjustly. Mm -hmm. And um, they have their names, uh, where they're from, and you have to do the research on that person. Um, And you can't contact the family but Mm -hmm. you just have to research their name and you can look through their social media and whatever and find out Mm -hmm. something about that person and then make a quilt square and the quilt square has to have their name on it and I believe it has to have their birth date or date of death I can't remember Mm -hmm. and um and so you have to honor them through that quilt square then you send it in to the Social Justice Sewing Academy and they make uh, these banners, Remembrance Project banners. And they're beautiful. But wow. at the same time, when you, if you go on their website and you take a look, you see all of these banners and these faces and mm. names. And you're like, oh my goodness. And the hard part is we'll never be done making quilt squares ever. Wow. You know, when you think about it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's always going to be someone that we have to make a quilt square for. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, yeah. And then are I'm, these given to the families or what happens with the No, band? they're displayed in different art installations. Okay. And um, they do have a project where you can make a quilt for a family. And they mm -hmm. also have another um, branch where they are going into schools or community organizations and teaching people how to sew quilts, which is wow. really cool. I know yeah. because, you know, it's a lost art. Sewing is a lost yeah. art. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm That's hoping amazing. my hope is my goal for this year is to bring the Remembrance Quilt Project to Lancaster City during our run for racism, which is through the YWCA where my daughter works. So we're when hoping to work together. Um, I'm sorry, what? When is that? It's in April. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's in April. Yeah. 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 Because I, that is just the neatest idea. Cause I, you know, like if you've read the book, Just Mercy and you're like, I want to do this, but I'm not a lawyer, but like, what do I, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. just, that was just making me feel like this is how we could get involved or like, mm -hmm. it just, it just brought a tear to my eye. Like just thinking of yes. how big of an impact that project could bring. It really yeah. is. And when you start researching your person, right. Um, you're, you, you're kind of blown away by it. And when you're making this square, there's something emotional about it. It's mm. really hard for me to put words to, but mm. it was just hard for me to make that square. Like it wasn't hard physically, but you're right. like, wow, I'm doing this to commemorate someone's death. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. and it's and it all does. not non for profit because they don't want to make money off of a person's death. Right. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And you're, learning about and knowing the person behind the headline or whatever is being right. whatever we see through the media you know what I mean it's mm -hmm. the it's like the the heart and soul behind it so right it's really amazing so yeah. it, um it's the sewing um the social, social justice sewing, sewing academy. academy okay SJS. so I'll find a link and share that um in sure. the show notes too. so mm -hmm. that is really special thank you for yeah telling us about that. Cool stuff yeah I know yeah. It's, it's exciting yeah. And it sounds like you have um, some pretty cool daughters too. So <laughs> I'm so fortunate. They're so much fun. You know, I mean, sometimes your kids can get on your nerves. Mine have never really done that. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> once in a while. But <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very they give you the gentle yeah. nudges to get into business. So they just sound like, <laughs> yeah, awesome well, and it's, we bounce, you know, we bounce ideas off of each other. And my yeah. poor husband and their husbands have to hear all about weddings. Yeah. when we're together because even my youngest she still does signage for um the place where she got married they um they saw her work and so mm -hmm. they asked her to work for them so mm -hmm. she does wedding signage for them they have that's a so really cool. elevator that's all chalk paint and so someone does something for the couple in the elevator you know oh, to represent so cool. them so she does yeah. that the drawing it's really cool stuff so yeah it's fun you know yeah we we're a creative group she did my um test did my logo i i noticed that i was like i love yeah. that you have a little fleece jacket of your i need to get some clothing no it's like a little yeah it's a little shirt i don't know yes, what company i got this from i i asked them to you know put it on there for me yes. so. love it love it <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for spending your morning with me because i think You're welcome. Like I said, just really encouraging to and we talked about this before we hit record that term maybe after that term imposter syndrome of how it mm -hmm. comes so it just can be really overwhelming and there's no need to be because you just start where you're at and then you can either continue you know at home or you can like in your case build a new home specific to the business or move yeah, but you got to start somewhere mm -hmm. so just getting over those initial setbacks and important. any you can do it look if i can do this you can do this because, yes. you know, I'm not the newest kid on the block, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I've been around the block, okay? And I've had to learn about social media and I've had yeah. to learn about branding. And, mm -hmm. you know, I did learn some of that when I was doing consulting because I was working for a business, not a school, yeah. you know? But mm -hmm. boy, I the social media piece, and I'm constantly saying to my to my daughters. Okay. What, what did you think about that? Did you see my reel? Did you see my latest reel? <laughs> you know, I was like, am I doing all right? What's my, what's my grade? You know, my report card grade. On this. <laughs> I'd say it's awesome. Like, oh, it's well, thank awesome. you. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I will see you next time I'm in uh, Pennsylvania. I got to plan a trip to Lancaster now. Or we can go to like a sight and sound concert or something together. That would be great. (laughs) Yes. Plenty of things to do here in Lancaster. Perfect. Well, thank you, Fran, so much. I can't wait to share this with you.